Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm going to give you guys in the viewerverse all my best tips for fishing in No Man's Sky. Yeah, I'm going to be jumping over to a planet that I haven't managed to catch all fish on, and um, using that as my example. I might go to a cactus planet. We'll see what we can find anyway, people. So first step is how to find a planet. So to find a planet, I need to go aboard my freighter. So we go, let's go on over. This was a base that I'd done previously in a previous episode. I'll show you how I made all that base and why I make the bases the way I do. All that sort of stuff is coming up in this episode, people. It might be a bit of a long one. Don't know. We shall see. But firstly, I need to call in my freighter. And there's a good reason why I use my freighter to find a planet, which all will become apparent very soon, people. Okay, so aboard my freighter, I have this piece of technology installed. When you use this technology, it scans the whole system that you're in. It tells you what planets are there. It's like this planet here. I can see it's got magnetized ferrite and idiom, and it's a harsh blue globe. Now, what I really would like to have seen there is activated idiom. Activated idiom would mean that it's got like, um, you know, really cool gnarly storms, which means I can catch all the stormfish in that system. Here you go. I just move myself over a little bit. Clearly, I think this might be a better view to stay in, to be fair. But yeah, this piece of technology is a godsend. Now, to get that, you have to head down here. You see this panel that looks like a squashed armadillo. You hit that up, and it's underneath the actual technology that you can find inside of here. Base parts and upgrades. So you need to go into there, and it's under your upgrades menu, which you have to actually press R1 on the PlayStation. You can see the actual controls at the top there. It should tell you whatever yours are for yours. But inside of here, it's in here, and it's that one there. The scanner room that you need to unlock. You are going to need salvage frigate modules. This is not a guide on how to get salvage frigate modules i do have one on it though if i can find it i'll put a link up there for you coolio so get that installed now on the galactic map what you're looking for inside of the galactic map is these sort of purple systems because they're going to have indium idiom idiom indium people have been saying to me captain steve pronounce it properly it's indium indium Okay, I always say idiom. Okay, right, so here we go. If we head on over to here, then we're heading there. Now, I've just clicked on it, and I can see this has only got two planets, but it doesn't have any moons, and it doesn't have any water. So if I want to do fishing, that's probably not a good one to go to. So I need one that's got water, got a lot of planets. Moons don't have water, so I'm looking for one that doesn't have a lot of moons. This doesn't have a lot of moons, and this has one, two, three, four planets. Freaking awesome. So we go in there, I guess, and it also has water. OK, well, now that I've arrived in the system in question, let's run on up and let's use that piece of technology. And you'd see that it scans all planets and lets me know what's here. Boom. And there's two with water. We've got this one, which is a frost crystal planet. I've already found all frost fish. If you want to see my video on how to find all frost fish, I'll put a link up there. Go check it out. And we've got this one here. And we can see here, this is an azure planet. Brilliant. It's got 13 creatures on, but it's also got activated idiom. Now, this could be one of those exotic planets, which, yes, we need to go fish that. So we're going to go be doing that then. Heck yes, let's head on down. Let's have a look at that planet. So it was grey with red water. What was it called? Zibet. OK, cool, yeah. It's already been discovered by somebody else, so I can't rename it. So let's go and have a look at planet Zibet. Lovely. Flying out. Cool, yeah. Now, all planets will act as if they've been scanned, which is really helpful. That looks like it could be it right there. It is. So you can actually see where the water patches are from space anyway. So I'm just going to head there where I can see a massive swathe of red. Cool. I'll see you down at the ocean. OK, right. Well, I've arrived located on this beautiful planet and I'm just landed somewhere on a little island out at sea. Now, what you can do is put down a base computer if you really want to. But what I want to do is find the deepest area of ocean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my... I can call down any exocrafts that I own because I've got the uh, the technology on my freighter. Again, it's found in the same place as that sort of scanner room, but it just lets you call in any of your exocrafts into the system that your freighter is in. So here we go. Let's go into here. And all I'm going to do is scan for an underwater submerged ruin. If you haven't got this technology, if you do put down a base computer, you can glitch in one of these bays, basically. Or you can find the resources and put the bay in. You can do it the long way. Anyhow, 
I've now got this locked in. So it's over there, 38 minutes that way. I'll see you over at that relic site. The reason why I search for an underwater relic is because they're normally situated 70 U's underwater, the max depth that a planet usually has. But then you can dig down below it because there's treasure chests there, isn't there? And you can dig down to about 90 to 100 U's, meaning that it gives you the opportunity to get a higher catch rate of giant or enormous fish, the colossal fish. Okay, well I've arrived, Cated, at this underwater relic, and I've got the landing gear for my ship so I can actually land here. But if I just dive down, all I'm doing is I'm putting down a base computer right here. I mean, yeah, people might say, oh, you shouldn't put it on a natural point of interest, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of these underwater relics on the same planet, so find your own. And you, I'd suggest do the same. And there's lots of these planets across the universe, so I don't think it's going to hurt too many people, to be fair. And how often do you want to dig up the chests? It's, it's very rare, or at least it is in my case. So I don't feel this hurts anything. Anyway, I've claimed this as a base. Lovely. Now, if I swim down here, you can see the depth right now. OK, so the maximum on this is only 50 U's, but that's still not bad for catching medium to large fish. But here you go. If I use my terrain manipulator now and I just dig down here. Boom. This should give us the max depth for this planet. Now, if I press R2 a couple of times, I can increase that, the actual uh, terrain manipulation. And I've managed to get down to 70 U's. So this planet's max depth is probably 70 U's, which is, it's still okay. We're still going to get quite a lot of enormous fish here. Right. So what I want to do now, so I want to build this up. So I'm using this base part, even though it's not the base part that I want, mainly because the base part that I do want has got some really awkward snapping points. Um, this bit is a little bit tedious. So you have to get it to the height that you need. So I need to take it all the way out of the ocean. This is going to be our deepest one at 70 U's. The next, I mean, that's going to be for our enormous and colossal fish at 70 U's. Our medium fish, 50 U's is fine. Medium to large, 50 is fine. And then we want something really shallow for the, uh, the final one. There we go. Let's just get up out of the water. OK, that's probably one too many, but I've done that on purpose. OK, so here we go. Let's go into the old build camera, because what the part that we really want is this one. This is the part that we really want. OK, go into build camera. And what I want to do is delete that one and then stick this one underneath. Delete that one, stick it underneath. Oh, it's gone and blinking changed. Why did it do that? There we go. I'm going to delete that one as well. OK, so. The reason why I want this base part is, look, it's got a hole that goes all the way through the middle. It's like a giant tube. So that you can fish through it, which is awesome. OK, right. So we go. Let's uh, go down here and stick that in. And I'm going to do that all the way down. It takes freaking time. OK, I'll see you in a moment. OK, done. Now let's plumb it. Let's see if it is actually at 70 U's. Let's just cast into there. Let's have a look. See, boom, into my hole. Now, if it's not showing you the depth on the D-pad, just press left on PlayStation. I don't know what it is on, on your platform, but left on the D-pad. You can see there, bottom left corner now, 70 U's. Freaking awesome. OK, so we've got that to the right depth. That's 70 U's. Now, because we know that storms are quite frequent on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the top one with a biodome, like so. OK, now you're probably thinking, well, now it hasn't got the hole all the way through it. You're quite right, it hasn't. So if I go and get this little tunnel or I could put just a door on it if I wanted to. But the reason why I'm probably going to put a, a tunnel on it is because then I want to do another one next to it, because we know that there's going to be 50 U's not so far away. So I'll just go over here. Because I want to get it out of the way of the relic, which I know is directly underneath me right now. And I'm going to build another biodome just there. OK, and then all I'm going to do is just put one of those on it because I don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. It's fine, just like that. But now I've kind of made myself a little bit of a, a bit of an issue of getting in there. So, you know what, let's just delete out one of those and put that in. 
Okay, right. Now I'm just going to stick a door on. Lovely jubbly. Door, door, door. You know, I'm going to go for this one so I don't have to wait for it to open. Fly on up. You know what? Let's put one on the other side as well, just to make it a little bit easier to get in. And there we are. I'm in. Okay, so now what I need is a ladder. I'm going to stick that there. Done. I'm just going to double check the depth before I do anything else. Make sure nothing's gone wrong. Slap that in there. Boom. See what the depth is. It's still 70 U's. The reason I've got the biodome on top is to protect myself from the storms, I guess. And just so people know when they visit here that it's 70 U's deep, I'm going to stick decals on here to say it's 70 U's. So there we go. Seven and zero. How cool is that? OK, we've got that on. Lovely. We can run over here, do the same on this, just stick a ladder in. Boom. Slap that in there. Let's check the depth for this one, shall we? Pow. And that one's about 46, 50 U's, give or take. You know, that's going to be good for medium and large fish. So you know what? On here, I'm just going to put 45. Since it's saying 46, we'll put 45 on there. Boom. Uh, did that move at the last freaking second? No, it didn't. That's all right. That's good. 45. Nice. Now, a bonus of having these biodomes on here is if you've unlocked all the different plants that you can put in, because the bionic laws need lubricant, they're made using faecium and using gamma root. So you only need like two faecium plants for a whole stack of the, uh, the rest of the plants. So there's the gamma root there. I'm just going to put all these around the outside edge and I'm going to do the same in both biodomes. So if I do want to make any bionic laws, it's not going to be too difficult to do so. Hokey pokey. Right, so now I've got two of these doors in this corridor out here. What I might do is just delete one of these doors like so. And what I might do is then just put a little um, a little gantry coming off of here. Come on, gantry there. Boom. And another one. And I'm going to have a power room. So let's go for let's go for this one here. Actually, I'll go for a square one. It gives me a bit more room to move around. And uh, this room is going to power the base. So, yeah, not that we overly need power at the moment, but I do want to add in a teleporter to get here with ease. So I'm just going to put in a load of these. And two batteries. And then we need my teleporter so we can get back here nice and easily. Chicka pow. And I'm going to put in a large refiner. Put in the things that you think you're going to need the most. And because I, I'm, we're probably going to be selling fish every now and again, I feel that a galactic trade terminal wouldn't be amiss, you know? So, galactic trade terminal, stick that on the wall. And the other thing I think I will need is probably a nutrient processor, just in case I want to create different baits for whatever reason. So let's just go into camera mode and put that there. Now I'm doing all of this in creative mode, and then I can swap to normal mode before I upload it or whatever. This should get power as soon as the sun comes up. I mean, you have got the ability to put windows into here, dress this up however you want and make it look really swanky and lovely or whatever. I'm just going to put in a couple of windows just for viewing sake, since we're out at sea. It looks quite cool, doesn't it? That'd do me. Fairly happy with that. I mean, it's night time right now. So right now would be a good time to start fishing to get your night fish. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what about the super shallow? Now, if you've been lucky, there might be an island in close proximity to your base that you can build on. I haven't been lucky. As you can see here, there is no, there is nothing in close proximity. So what I can do is I can dive down and I can make myself an island of my own. So I'm just going to put a little balcony out here. So this is going to be for the very small fish. Now this can take some time depending on how deep the ocean is where you've, you've gone and landed. But what I need to now do is use my terrain manipulator to build terrain all the way up to the top. So if I just get my terrain manipulator and you want to put it on your create, create mode, you can use R2 to make it bigger, so it's not going to take you as long. You just sort of want to build a massive great big column going all the way up until you get out of the ocean. 
You can worry about its actual positioning later. I'm just, I'm just going to get it out of the ocean for now. There we go. And then I need to bring it over to where I need it to be. So we're going this way. Come on. Now, if you're really clever with your terrain manipulator, you can do all sorts of wonderful stuff. I'm not very clever with my terrain manipulator, so I'm just going to make a little mini island here. So as you can see, it's very crude, my little island. Lovely. That's all you need. And then all you do is, rather than have create, you want to use the mine. Make it a bit smaller this time, though. And just dig down until you see water appear. Don't go too deep. Okay. Um, is that water in there? Hard to say, isn't it? I keep going just a little bit more. All right, if you're unsure, use your rod. Plop. Uh, okay, well, that's giving me the actual... It's not giving me the depth. So, I don't know about that one. Let me just uh, continue on. It's probably not that good because I'm in a storm at the moment or something's going mental. I'll wait till the storm ends and then we'll try it in a moment. Okay. Well, what I did is I flattened it level with the ramp and then I dug down a little bit. And as you can see now, even though it's in a storm, it's showing a depth of 0.8 U. So it's super freaking shallow. Now I have got the bionic bait on. I can see a fish is about to go and bite this. So I might as well hook it anyway and have a look what I just got. So there you go. A small aquatic creature found within unsettling waters. That are, uh, Okay, so there we go. This is definitely a weird biome, so that's pretty darn nice. So that worked. So you know what? I'm going to just go out here. Now, because this one hasn't got protection from the storms, I'm just going to put a little mud hut right by this. Make it maybe a tad bigger. So I can sort of fish from the doorway of the little mud hut and still be protected from the storms if, if I'm not in creative mode. So we go. And then I can just fish there, see? Boom. Done. And there's 1.8 U's at the moment. Lovely. So it's going to fluctuate a little bit, depending on where you cast, but hopefully that's going to be super shallow. Lovely jobs. You can dress all this up. You can put some grass there, make it look lovely. Heck yeah, lovely jobs. Also, what I tend to do inside of options and under difficulty, as well as being in custom, um, the reason it's in custom is basically this is creative mode. But then what I've done is under fishing, I've put it on auto catch, which means that it automatically catches the fish for you. You don't have to hook them. You don't have to reel them in. You're not going to lose any fish. Basically, that's why I'm doing this. So hopefully that's a massive help to you guys and the view of us. I like it this way. Done. Oh, look, we've got another little fish nibbling right now. The nice thing about standing in this mud hut is if, if, if you do get hit by a storm, you're not going to get thrown all over the place. But there we go. I just got given an uncommon fish inside of this area. Freaking awesome. Right, so something I tend to do, I mean, this is just something I do for my own sort of sanity, is I sort of group the fish for the actual regions. Like, I've got all my colossal ones there, got all my large ones here, got all my mediums and uh, there, got all my small ones over here. Now this was, well, all my small ones over here. I've got this from the lush planets that I just completed. If you want to see oh, how I caught all these lush fish, I've got a video. I'll put it up there. Go check that out. Coolio. So anyway, I don't need all of these ones, but what I do need is these at the moment. These are both small and these are both on this unsettling weld. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. And um, yeah, I like to keep things organized in a way that I can find stuff quite easily. But you know what? What I might do is either put all these fish from the lush world into my skiff or I might turn them into bait. Now, there's a couple of baits that you can turn these into that are quite good, like the Seas Bounty or the Assarted Row. It's quite easy to do. Um, in fact, I could show you, I suppose, how to make these baits because it's still part of fishing tips. So if I go into my power room, head on over here. And what you want to do is you want to put in three of your different types of fish. So uh, I can get this guy, for example. Now you can separate them down as well. So I can put six in there like that and go down, get my other fish. Stick that in there. You can see there I've got a sorted row already, which is nice. But then I might want to put that in there and then you get salty platter. Salty platter is really good. I'll show you how, how, how these differ from one to the other. 
okay so the salty platter is my favorite so you just need to put free fish into the slot it's that simple okay so i'll show you the salty platter first so if we go down to the bait you can get it from the quick menu if i take this bionic lure off which is currently catch rate of 94 percent and it also helps you catch legendaries and it's the only one that really gives you that legendary boost but i should have salty platter inside of here to put on the hook so there's a sorted row salted platter gives a rarity catch rate of 46 percent, but also gives you a size improvement of 11 percent. so it's actually pretty darn good but it doesn't help with catching legendaries in fact there isn't any of these that does now there's the seas bounty and the sorted row are the other two a sorted row is going to only give you a nine percent cat um, rarity catch rate it's really terrible and the other one, the Seas Bounty, I think gives you a boost at night or day or something. Let me have a look. Seas Bounty, there you go, put that in. Attracts nocturnal fish, but also gives you a rarity catch improvement of 19%. To be honest, I don't bother with them. There's a lot of different sort of, I think there's going to be more rebalancing to these um, food recipes as and when. And I will let you know when that happens. But for now, I will just stick to using the Bionic Law. And the Bionic Law is quite difficult to actually craft. So let me just show you the ingredients for the Bionic Law, if you did want to craft some. Bionic Law, you're going to need a Nemo Chambers, two of them, Iron Batteries times three of them, and Lubricant times three of them. Now, if you have done what I've done, you've got these biodomes, that's going to give you your Lubricant in spades. And if you have gone and put in a galactic trade terminal, sometimes you can actually purchase a Kate, some of the other bits and bobs that you need, like the amino chamber. If you're super lucky, you might have it in your list. I don't have it in my list. But to make the amino chamber, I don't think it takes too much anyway. I think it's just oxygen and um, dehydrogen. Let me just, just double check. So yeah, you need uh, condensed carbon, sorry, metal plating and chlorine. Now, if you, if you are short on chlorine, to make chlorine, uh, you can use, like I say, the oxygen and dehydrogen. So if you pop into here, so let me just see if I can find some oxygen, some dehydrogen. Hopefully I've got some on my person. But yeah, you can make chlorine using it anyway, if I've got it. One sec. Okay, so your oxygen and your dehydrogen actually make salt. So there we go. Turn that into salt. Lovely, lovely. And then the salt and the oxygen turns into chlorine. And yeah, so there you go. Easy peasy to make your amino chambers. So we go. Finished. And get my salt. Slap that over there. Kaboom. That's going to make you chlorine. Coolio. So once you've got your chlorine to make your amino chambers, it's fairly simple. You just need some metal plating. Metal plating you make out of ferrite. Dundally and done. OK, chums, well, I've just added a few things around my little pond uh, just to make it look a little bit more pond like and put something down in there. Brilliant and lovely. Now, my ship is just bouncing about. I would like to have a bit of a landing pad for my ship, if possible. So I might stick a landing pad on the side of here or something. Um, yeah, might do anyway. Not too sure, to be fair. I mean, I have got technology on pretty much everywhere where I can put myself a little exit. So, yeah, it might just have to go without a landing pad. I'd have a look around. OK, so I removed my um, Galactic Trade Terminal from the back wall. I'm trying to add the landing pad here. And as you can see, it doesn't actually connect on. It's really, really odd that they've gone and changed how landing pads connect. I don't know why they've done this. So to get the landing pad to connect, it's really freaking finicky. So you have to put a wall at the end of your corridor. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. I, I know. And then go back to your landing pad and then your landing pad will actually connect on bizarre and then on that wall that you've just put in you need to stick a door yeah don't ask me i didn't make it it's freaking weird okay so here we go um okay that's not going to work actually so i'm going to just delete that panel and then stick a door on and then when you go out the door look there's a bloody great big gap between you and the the freaking landing pad. So what I tend to do then is delete that door. <laughs> okay. And then I get another cut. There must be an easier way. There must be an easier way to do this. I don't know how to get. The, look, when you go to put it on, look, it looks like it's going to all connect and it's going to look lovely. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So, yeah, I'm going to use the door and stick the door there. 
and it's still a little bit of a, a bit of a step but it's actually okay look it's all right fine now i've got a landing pad there which i can call my ship to which is cool and now i'm just going to put a galactic trade terminal right here it's a bit of a walk for me to get to my galactic trade terminal but you know what i can live with it, it doesn't really matter or i can stick the galactic trade terminal on the wall behind this guy over here the only thing is it will be floating in midair uh, which is again it's, it's neither here nor there is it so where is it there it is look if i stick it just here oh it's not letting me All right let's uh, get rid of that window then and now let's try there we go now it's letting me do it pow okay i just deleted something by accident didn't i probably that yeah one of them it's getting a bit cluttered in here there we go that's my base done that's all i need for fishing so now i'm just going to upload this base i'm also going to get rid of all the fish that aren't sort of necessary to this biome i might release them to get nanites but if i look at my nanites i've got maximum nanites i don't really need to so you know what i might just delete them also got max cash so i don't need those either so i'm just going to delete all the fish that i don't need in here so i don't get confused okay so i'm just going to call it exotic world fishing capture a new base screenshot It'd be nice if I was above the water. I quite like my little pond on this one, so I might just take a picture of that. Yeah, why not? That looks quite sweet, doesn't it? Kaboom. There we go. And upload. Dundalee and done. Right, I'm now ready to fish. So there we go. That's all the prep work done for how to fish. Lovely jubbly. So I've got one that's 70 use deep for my colossal. Well, large colossal and enormous fish. And then I've got one that's 50 U's deep for my medium to large fish. And then I've got this one that is like zero U's deep to about, I don't know, five U's deep at best, perhaps. That's um, for my small fish. So, yeah, pretty darn awesome. Done. Right there. Well, I think I'm ready to fish now. So here we go. But that's all my best fishing tips. Now, one more thing to give a mention before I move on to actually catching fish is the skiff has had its um, space upgraded. So you can now get a heck of a lot more stuff into your uh, fishing skiff. Where is it? It's on this menu. I guess. So there we go. And you can access its storage from here now as well. So you've got your exocraft, which is uh, under the water. But if I just go here, I can now put those into my ingredient. Oh, okay. I thought this skiff would actually show up on here, but it doesn't. Okay. It said access it from anywhere inside the patch notes. Not that I'd overly tried, but all the fish I do want to keep, I'm going to put into here. You can just press triangle on them and fast transfer them. I should have kept my other legendaries from the lush that I just caught in here because I'm wondering if one day... I'm wondering one day if we do get an aquarium, it'd be nice to put all these fish inside of that aquarium, wouldn't it? So I'm going to keep hold of all my legendaries, even though I went and deleted my lush ones. I might have to recatch those at some point, but I'm not overly fussed. Something to mention, people, is you do have these auto catchers as well, which are these things. Now, you, you are limited to three per base. All right. Now, I don't like them. There's a reason why I don't like them, is whatever they catch, they don't actually proper register that you've caught them. So they don't actually appear in your Wonders catalogue. I mean, I put them there anyway, but it gives you sort of like greyed out versions of the fish. I don't know whether I've got any that I can show you as an example. Uh, let's go over, because I've stopped using them for that reason, to be fair. Uh, so is that greyed out? No, that's actually caught. I've actually caught one. Uh, I don't think I've got any that... It, oh, okay, that, that one's greyed out, see? And you can see there, time's caught zero. Because I didn't actually physically catch it, it doesn't register. That's probably one that I caught inside of one of these auto catches. So it doesn't register as a proper fish. Uh, just as a bit of a heads up. Anyway, let's get into... Actually, uh, there we go, one second. You can't actually see there where it says time's caught zero. Time's caught zero and largest catch zero. So that's what they look like when you catch them inside of an auto catcher or if somebody gives you a fish from their inventory. Yeah, the same sort of difference. Right. -o. OK, now I'm ready to start catching my fish. I'm going to go to level 70 first. Usually the enormous and the colossal fish are the hardest to catch. And sometimes you can catch fish at various depths inside of this now. 
before it was a bit more limited, I actually made a, a really lovely little graph, which I'll put on the screen right now for you. Check that out. So yeah, the depth did matter massively before. I don't think it matters as much now. Anyway, let's put a bait on. My favorite bait of all baits is the Bionic Law. Uh, I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, Captain Steve, try using this one, try using that one. But no, this one is the one that gives you the chance of catching yourself a legendary. You can see there in the actual text, it says there, a specialist law that's gonna give you an interest of the legendary fish. And there's legendary fish at every size. There's even legendary fish to be ca captured in storms and all sorts of stuff. So there we go. I'm going to plonk that in there and I'm going to start fishing. Okay, guess. Okay, Johns, my next tip is I use the No Man's Sky Assistant app to see which fish are relevant to that biome I'm in. So at the moment, I'm in a weird biome. And I've already caught myself the Aurora jellyfish. And this is under small. So I can see exactly what's available there. Apparently there's an abyssal horror to be caught as well inside of this uh, under small. And look at it. It's it's like a legendary, a legendary abyssal horror egg. Wow. Okay, right, well that's cool. And that's only caught in very shallow waters. So I'm not gonna get that one right now. So what I'm fishing for right now is everything that's in the weird and in the size of colossal. So there's four colossal fish that I need to catch. So I know what I'm after, which is pretty cool. And look, the last one in each list is usually the legendary. So there we go. And it also gives you little mini icons to let you know whether they need to be caught at day or night. So there is actually one stormfish here to be had, that, that breached caller like a snail. And the rest are caught, well, there's one at day, there's one at night, and there's that big legendary I want is either or. So you know what? I'm just going to carry on fishing here and see if I can catch those four colossals. I'll let you know how I get on. Oh, I'm fishing at depth. And this one I caught the wyvern brain worm. But yeah, pretty darn nice. It's uh, medium sized. So I've got my little sort of like sorting area here. So I can see that that one's one of those. So I'm just going to stick it down here. These are my small catches, small and small. This will be my medium catch area. Then I'd have large and colossal over here. You know, cool, yeah. Well, would you look at that? I got myself the uncommon. It's colossal in size. Heck yes. And it can only be caught in the daylight hours. So that was a very good catch. Very good catch indeedy doody. Well, got this one as well. Didn't mean to catch that. I'm only after the colossals. But like I say, you can still pull small fish out of a 70 used deep hole. It's just the chance of getting colossals is higher from 70 use. It's higher. And yeah. I don't think you're going to get a colossal though from a really shallow puddle. No, that, that's less likely. We just got a legendary. I find that about one in say twenty is going to be a legendary on these um, these bionic laws. But yeah, this one's a medium size. Pretty nice though. A lantidian, a lantidian crab. Be keeping him. A shell and claw of perfect crystal. Eye stalks aglow with purple rage. A being displaced from another reality. And cast here as a crab. Ha! I can't. I really do hope we get to see purple systems in the next update. And I hope a lot of this sort of lore transpires into that. That'd be freaking excellent to see giant crabs. Uh, golly, uh, anyway, brilliant day. Eh? I just got another crab. Another crab. This is a screaming crab only found in unsettling worlds. Yeah, there we go. This is a rare catch for most anglers. Ah, oh, I do feel privileged. Lovely. We've got crabs. <laughs> Plural. Who, by golly gondrops, we caught a colossal, and it's the legendary, it's the many mouthed lunker. A colossal aquatic creature found within the unsettling waters. Brilliant day! On the surface or below the waves, this vessel hungers, the vessel feeds. Heck yes, I think the only one I've got left to catch now is the one in storms. Or is there also one for in night? I think there might be one for in night. Yeah, so there we go. I've sorted them out. I need a night one and a storm one. I may as well carry on fishing in this big hole, this deep hole, because as you can see, I've already caught a load on the uh, medium, well, medium size and the small size. I'm surprised I haven't bagged myself a couple more larges because this depth should be large to enormous. And so a bit of an odd one. But here we go. Let's continue on fishing. It's good that I got the legendary, though. 
I was just saying, I haven't caught any larges. What did I just go and catch? A large, a large fish. Hey, kids, brilliant thing. Good you. <laughs> Might as well carry on fishing at this depth. I mean, I do need to fish at the shallow depth using the bionic bait to get that um, legendary Hadel core egg thing. Abyssal egg horror. I don't know, whatever it was. Oh, we've got a storm warning coming in, so I might get that storm fish if I'm extremely lucky. This one won't be it because it hasn't actually kicked in yet, the storm. You don't see any sort of red numbers appearing on the deck. But we've got something colossal. It's a giant ray. It's found all the way across the galaxies. But hopefully the storm will be kicking in any second now. I've just brought up the depth in the bottom corner. You can see there, 71 U's. But that should start flashing red when we're under a storm conditions. In fact, it would automatically pop up on its own in red when the storm actually hits. It's still taking a little while to get here. But I quite like to rinse and repeat cast rinse cast rinse cast as quickly as i can during the start storm to try and catch the fish i'm after you can tell when it's colossal because the actual hologram is colossal as well but there we go we've got this one screaming crab it's not during a storm has the storm actually started yet i mean the waves seem to be coming up a bit higher but we're not oh there you go it's in red now it's in red now we could be able to catch a storm fish we'll see if we get lucky it does look like it's either a large or a colossal that's on the line. I mean, there could be other stormfish out there anyway. I haven't looked at every single tier inside the app. Nope, it's just, it's just a normal shrimp. Get back in that hole as quick as possible. Recast as quick as we can. It's still flashing red. We're still at the right depth. Hopefully we're going to get this stormfish. I've caught one, but it's not for this planet. This is across the universe and uh, extremely rare and can only be caught in storm. Yeah, and the storm has just ended, so I have to wait for the next storm to cycle round. But because this is an activated idiom planet, storms are very frequent, so that's not a problem. So I need to catch a nighttime fish as well. And you can see here that it's only five o'clock. So you know what? Now there's no storm and it's not nighttime, I know that I'm not going to be catching the fish that I want to catch. So I'm going to go to this little pool here. I'm going to try and catch that abyssal horror egg that I know is a legendary and it's caught at a low depth and I'm keeping with the um, bionic law. You can see down there the depth is a lot shallower. I do like fishing in my little my little cubby hole. I mean, it looks so cool doesn't it? It really does. I might have to make a thumbnail out of this people. It looks awesome. Thank you. Okay well I think this will make the perfect thumbnail. You can sort of see a little fish there. It looks pretty darn freaking epic. I think that looks good for a thumbnail. Hope you guys do too. That's weird. It's gone to night time already. I haven't pulled many fish out of here. Oh, we've got one anyway, but it's a rare. OK, well, now it's night time. I may as well run back over to my 70 use hole and see if we can catch the night time colossal fish. So we go. Let's go into that. Chicka boom. Now, it's not a legendary. So what I could do is swap to the night orb to make sure that I catch just night fish, which isn't probably a bad shout. Now, you can actually swap the bait out while you're actually fishing, which is a little bit weird. Well, there we go. Yeah, I don't believe it's a legendary. So there we go. Tracks nocturnal fish. I'll double check on the No Man's Sky Assistant app. Okay, let's just get that cast back in again with that. So biome, weird, size, colossal. And the nighttime one is this void squid. You can see there that it is rare. It's rare, but it's not legendary. So I think the night orb might work for it. But because it's rare, I think maybe the bionic law might be better. But we'll see. Okay, well, we did get one that's night. It's not the one I'm after. At least I don't think it is. Because this one says Aurora jellyfish. And it's not it's not super rare. So that's a little bit weird. Uh, it's the void squid that I'm after. Void squid. So let's get casting back out again. But at least I did catch another night one. Pretty darn cool. Oopsie. Another one. Same same as the one before. So we are catching night ones, but I think maybe the Bionic Lore is going to give me a better chance of an epic, which it is. Or a legendary, which it isn't. But there might be other epic, legendaries, stormfish in the other brackets I don't know about because I haven't looked at everything on the app. But what I tend to do is I do one night fishing with the night orb. And then the next night that rolls around, I'll swap it back into the Bionic Lore to see if I can get better epics. 
Okay, there's a storm coming and it's night time now. I just caught a screaming crab, which is a rare. But what I'm going to do, because I still need to catch, you know, some pretty darn rare fish in this area, is I'm just going to swap that back to my bionic lure. And we're going to get back in because it's night time and there's a storm. Let's see if we can pull in something a little bit more special inside of here. We've got two more colossals to go. Both of them are fairly rare. Let's see. In fact, I'm thinking the one that is storm related, I think is a common. Let's just go back one second. So biome, weird, size, colossal. And the one that is in a storm, day or night, is actually, that's a green background, I've got a green screen, is actually common. So you know what, rather than have this bait on that I've got right now, this Urbanic Law, which attracts rare fish, what I think I should do is put this one on. Cool. Because that attracts fish that love storms. And its rarity catch rate is a lot lower. Okay, let's see if we can get that snail. This should be the perfect bait, the perfect time, the perfect depth to catch that colossal freaking green snail. All right. Let's see. So it's a case of having to choose the right bait for the right fish and having the sort of just to have a little bit of a play. I mean, yeah, that didn't quite work. But here we go. Carry on. And look at that. It paid off. I got him. I freaking got him. We got the little sn snail. Can only be caught in a snare, in, in a storm. Brilliant. OK, right. Now that I've caught that one, there is only the night fish left to go. And it's an epic. So, I mean, these ones improved catch rate of rarities, 35 percent, which isn't too bad. So I might just keep that on and see if we can get this epic at night as well. I'll just call this thing. It's not what I was after, but it's large. Brilliant. Eh? Cool. Yeah. And common, but not found at night. So, you know, this, this shadow orb isn't having much luck. I did catch two other night fish, though, but they're common across the universe. This is what I've been caught catching. That's what I mean. I've caught loads of these now, but they're found all the way across the universe. We have caught an epic at night. It's just the wrong one. It's not biome locked. We need the biome one for this weird area, but it's nice to see that we did catch the right sort of size and the right sort of level of rarity. Oh, come on. I can hear my solar panels kicking back in again. So if you've got your sound on, if you see you hear your solar panels kick back in, you know daytime's rolled around. If you're not seeing the daytime, but this will be my last night catch. And that looks like it's a large fish. Yeah. So might as well go back to the bionic law and go back to my little pond and hopefully try and catch that really rare little fish. OK, so there we go. Yeah, sun's back up now. Oh, no, get off the ladder. So I know what I'm fishing for, and it's a case of just swapping your location, running around. If you do alternate between the deepest water and the shallowest water, hopefully you're going to get the medium fish and the large fish in between the two, because you do get it spread out a bit. There is a bit of crossover, a bit of overlap. Ooh, I've just got this weird clam. It's uncommon, but it is biome locked to this one. That's pretty cool. Well, Jams, we got the Abyssal Horror Egg. Brilliant day. So there's only one fish left to catch in my small pond. So let's just pop on over. Let's have a quick look. See at that uh, lovely imbecile horror thingy. Listen to those these words. Do not allow this egg to hatch. Cast it back into the sea. I don't know. I'm keeping it. It's freaking mine, mate. Freaking mine. Who cares? I've got one more to catch here. It's called the hex fish or something like that. And it's common. So you know what? I'm just going to take the bait off completely and cast that in and let's see if we can catch him it's just a common so this is the one i want it's a hexascale minnow yes it's that little guy common fish let's we'll see if we get him he's small common should get him without a bait let's just hope is this going to be him it's a vector fin okay i've got a few vector fins yeah we'll carry on jumps i got him Got him. That's all small fish. Quarterman cated. Actually seven to get on the small area. So where is he? There he is. Hexascale minnow. That's all seven done for there. Right. So on medium sized fish, how many medium sized fish are there to get? There is actually six. Now I've got four. 
So, Atlantean crab. I'm sure I got the Atlantean. Yes, I got the Atlantean crab. I've got the other crab. Uh, we've got this little guy. So I need the inverted brain fin, which only can be caught in storms. Great. And I need the stargazer that can only be caught at night. Now, because he's a medium sized fish, if I was to cast over the side, kind of, I want to be about 30 U's in depth. Let's have a look. How deep's that? 46. It's probably a little bit too deep. So what I might do is just move my skiff to shallower waters. If I move towards that island over there, that might be the best thing for me to do. So here we go. Let's um, move my skiff over there. Okay. Sweet, my skiff should start moving now. So yeah, you can actually move your skiff, which is another little mini tip there. It's going to take a while for it to rotate and get over there, though. It's moving. Look, you can see I'm going away from my base, I guess. And I can plumb it at other depths just to see how deep it is here, for example. So yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's try there. 30 U's. Perfect. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do. Stop. Uh -huh. Cool. Right, oh, and hopefully we might be able to catch that that smaller fish. I, I think it can only be caught in storms, though, can't it? Yeah, inverted brain. It's medium-sized, and there's another one that can only be caught at night. So we caught a merm fish. That's medium-sized. See what I mean? 30 U's is about right. I could build another little fishing pool here, technically, but you know what? It's not far off from where my base is anyway. Oh god, look, I'm moving all over the place. Maybe I ought to build another little fishing pool here for 30 U's. Yeah, because I'm going to keep falling off, aren't I? The skiff is still pretty skiffy. All right? So I'm going to move the skiff and I'm going to build another little bit of a base here, you know? Yeah, go, go away, skiff. Right, okay. We're going to build another base here. All right. Okay, right, well, it's night time, so I may as well get fishing, mind I? Okay, 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 let's get my fishing rod because there is one fish to catch here. And I think this one might be slightly rarer than... It's called the Stargazer. And it's a, it's like an uncommon fish. So, you know what? I, I think I might just put on the Night Orb. I might just use the Night Orb. I think that might be all right for this one. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, I, I clicked on it. It closed the window. Yeah, right, here we go. Ciao! And it's 32 use. Perfect for medium sized fish. Yeah. Medium to large. Let's see what we get. We might get the odd small as well at this sort of depth. But I think I'm going to get more mediums than anything else. So if you have got some odd mediums to catch, it might be worth doing one at 30 use. We got it straight away! <laughs> First fish! Stargate the boom! Right bait, right time, right depth. There we go. Boom! There is a little bit of method to the madness. The other one I need to catch is a medium storm fish. So, let's swap the bait out. Now, there isn't a storm going right now. Well, let's put on our storm bait. Now, some people tell me that it does actually attract fish when there isn't a storm. I don't think it does. But people have told me it does. So, we will see. Okay, chums, well, there is an incoming storm right now. Those numbers in the bottom left should start going red. I haven't caught a single stormfish, even though I've got the storm bait on. The Magna Pulse has not attracted stormfish outside the storm parameters. So maybe people are just on planets like this and they don't realise the storm is going if they're in creative mode. It's very easy to miss. But yeah, I have been told that the storm law helps attract fish even outside the storm parameters. <sighs> So you can use it on gentle planets, but I'm not seeing that in my own testing. I don't want to say that it doesn't work because some people I've had more than one person comment to say it does work. But the one we're after is actually a common fish and it's found in storms and it's called the inverted brain. <laughs> ah, there it is. We just caught it. We just caught the last of the medium fish. Brilliant, say. So that was on the storm bait during the storm at 30 use. Right depth, right time, right bait. There we go. Okay, jumps so onto large fish. Now there's four going by the No Man's Sky System app. And I have got two. I've got the shimmering lash tail, and I've also got the giant witch fin. 
So we've got those two. I need to catch the child of Helios. The child of Helios and non Euclidean. Okay, the non Euclidean is just uncommon. We should be able to get that. And it's not even in a storm. Okay, what about the uh, child of Helios? Let's have a quick look. Child of Helios, large. Child of Helios can be caught night and day. So I think all we need for those two is to go to my 70 U's of depth. No, not 70 U's, 50 U's of depth. So let's head on over into here. Let's try and get those two. Oh, but the storm is still going. Oh, it's clearing. So here we go, 45 U's of depth. That's about right for large. It's in between 50 and 70 for large. But as you can see, we've been getting enormous and colossal fish from the 70. So it will probably be better here. Oh, I've still got the, the storm bait on. I don't really need the storm bait. I'll take that off. And you know what? Because I want to catch one that's just uncommon, I might go for spicy chum, first of all. Actually, you know what? I could just go all out on this, couldn't I? Let's, let's go for the child of Helios first, and hopefully we might just catch the other one by chance. What did I get there? Tiny scuttlefish. All right, cool. Let's just continue on. I just caught the non-Euclidean flatfish. Uncommon. Large. Perfect. Okay. That's the one that I was going to try catching, just using, like, the spicy chum. But now it is just the child of Helios that I've got to catch in large. And then inside of Colossal, the only fish I've got to catch there is a storm fish. Yeah, that weird squid. That's going to take me a while, I think. OK, I'll carry on fishing for the child of Helios. OK, Jum, so what I'm doing is every time I hear incoming storm, I'm running into into the 70 use one, putting on the Magna Pulse and casting out for it. And hopefully during the storm, I might catch the Colossal. And then after the storm ends, running back, changing back to Bionic Law and seeing if I can catch this other fish inside of the uh, medium to large area. But I am catching more medium fish than large fish. And inside of here, I do catch the odd large fish, but it's it's mainly colossal at the moment. There you go, there's a colossal on the line now. Let's see what we get. Come on. Be the colossal storm fish. You know you want to be. Go on. No, nope, it's not. There's red numbers now. There we go. Let's get into it. Well, I didn't get lucky, people, so I've gone back to the other hole. And uh, here we go. Let's cast into there. Let's see what we can get out of this one. Got you. Now, chums, because I was only seeing sort of small and medium fish coming out of this 45 depth hole, I went down and dug it a little bit deeper. Dug it down to 55, and there we go. I now just got myself... A large, which is cool. It's not the one I'm after. I mean, I'm, I'm after the Child of Helios, which is a large, legendary fish. I'm getting a few more larges now, but I've still had a couple of mediums come out of here. We just got another large. So, yeah, it seems to be working a little bit better than it was. Now it's at 55 views. So, you go, 54 at the moment. Yeah, it depends where I'm fishing. Sometimes I get 56, sometimes I get 55, 54. But that's all okay. Righto, chums. So if you do want to come to this fishing location to catch all of your strange fish, there we go. Let's um, let's give you the portal code for this one. Okay, so there we go. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, I'll try and make that as big as I possibly can on screen. Now, I still have two fish remaining, which I'm going to catch on my own time. I will give it a little bit longer, but to be fair, I want to cut this video as being my best fishing tips. And I've just used this planet and this biome as an example. So, what I'd like to say, people, is thank you very much for watching. I'm going to say goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. However, there might be a little mini segment where I might catch one of the fish, or two of the fish, depending on how lucky I am. I'm going to give it another hour, and then that's the end. Anyway, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.